This is the Gobi Desert. Visiting here has been on our bucket list forever, but it always felt like this distant, faraway land that was totally out of reach until we found ourselves unexpectedly in Mongolia. Guys, we have made it. We're in Mongolia. Welcome to Mongolia. I just keep saying that. We're in Mongolia. Over the next five days, we'll be hopping in a van as part of a group trip to explore this incredible but rugged part of the country. I have literally squatted in an open field and peed today because that's how few washers are here. It's, it's for sure one of the hardest things I've done in a while. We're about to experience firsthand what it's like to stay in a traditional Mongolian gear. It's actually surprisingly really cool in here considering how hot it is outside. Eat the food of the desert. So I got vots, which is like a very traditional Mongolian, kind of like dumpling. Live out in the wild. I just actually slept good, but I'm really sore this morning. I feel like I slept on a sheet of wood, which is kind of what I did and witness the most incredible landscapes of our lives. I feel like there's just like nothing around and all of a sudden, boom, there are these cliffs. So grab your camel and join us as we leave paved roads behind in pursuit of the incredible wonders of the Gobi Desert. I swear if somebody was like a kilometer away and started whispering, it sounds like you could probably hear them. It's like watching a dog walking group. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is so cool. You gotta come guys, Mongolia's where it's at. Hey everyone, welcome to the middle of nowhere Mongolia. I feel like we have properly come to the part of Mongolia that I was so excited to explore on this trip. There's just like nothing yeah. but fields and horses. I really didn't know what to expect. I just expected, I guess, maybe a whole lot of horizon and yeah. that's exactly what we're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the downside though, over there. Yeah. All right guys, so the toilet situation, if you come <laughs> and do this trip, like be prepared, bring your own toilet paper. There's a lot of squatters, which is fine. Everything's pretty clean, um, but yeah, I also have peed on the side of the road using this as only my cover. So you gotta prepare yourself. As you can see, there's not really any trees to hide behind when no. you need to pee. So legitimately like bring a scarf or a <laughs> shirt and like, yeah, that's your cover. Over there's the outhouse we found by this random gasoline gas station. Gas station in the middle of nowhere, guys. I guess you can't really call it a random gasoline station. There is a bit of a town over there, but we have been driving for a little while, even though it's just day one. And the driving that we've done so far has been mostly just through fields, fields like, landscapes, greenery, seen lots yeah. of horses and goats, cattle. <laughs> but other than that, we haven't really seen too much out here. Nope, just livestock. It's kind of nice. If you really want to get away and go somewhere secluded, this is the place. And just like that, our tour to the Gobi Desert had begun. The drive on this first day is taking us 480 kilometers away from Mongolia's capital city, Ulaanbaatar. Before we reach the Gobi Desert region, we drive through the Mongolian steppe, which is an area of grasslands that don't seem to have a lot of grass at the moment, making our drive extra bumpy. We have officially left the road, it's like the paved road. Yeah. We're on what they call the natural roads here in Mongolia which pretty much means there are no roads. It's like a washboard, man. <laughs> I feel like the landscape's changing already, though. We're definitely getting like more like sandy, deserty vibes. They're yeah. slowly coming. I feel like we can just drive anywhere. We can. We are. <laughs> yes, we are. How does, how does the driver know where he's going? I honestly don't know. It's amazing. The Gobi Desert is one of the largest deserts in the world, spanning more than 500,000 square miles. And after hours and hours of driving through the steppe, we eventually crossed the invisible border into the Gobi Desert and arrived at our first stop in the region, which was more dramatic and extraordinary than we could have imagined. day of driving today yeah but man getting out just like checking out like where we've come to so cool I feel very very small feel properly in the middle of nowhere so the official name of this place in English is white stupa I can't quite pronounce the name in Mongolian but it is basically just like a plateau that looks down into this valley that looks like it's like a red almost kind of wavy looking hills 
And I guess this part of the world used to be underwater and there are evidence of that uh, around the area. But it's great to just look around from the top of these plateaus because you're so much higher than the rest of the horizon. You could really see so far into the distance. And what's incredible is that it's so quiet here as well. There's not a sound. I swear if somebody was like a kilometer away and started whispering, it sounds like you could probably hear them. <laughs> all right, we made our way all the way down to the bottom of these guys. And Miku and I are totally getting fairy chimney vibes from Cappadocia. Yeah, in Turkey. <laughs> in Turkey, yeah. This does kind of look like this, although I will say an awful lot less phallic. <laughs> I think what's really impressing me about the whole landscape is that these cliffs, it's only like appearing on one side, so you won't be able to see it from the opposite side, like if you're looking into the horizon. Oh. And I saw a sign that said that during rainy season, sometimes some of the livestock would fall over the cliff. They won't even see where the cliff ends oh, or where the cliff starts, I guess. But oh. um, it's kind of neat seeing it from the air. We had the drone up and you can so see how the landscape, it looks like, honestly, the entire ground just fell on one side and created this jagged cliff, like yeah. as if they were giant continental plates. It's really, really neat. Looks like we found our home for the night. She's right there. All right guys, let's show you our home for the night. You can hardly see me, there we go. This is a gur, a traditional Mongolian gur, which is like um, the type of house that Mongolians still use today, uh, the nomadic Mongolians. So this house is actually meant to be able to be moved to a different location at any time um, as the Mongolians follow livestock all around the country. So this one has five beds in it because there are five of us in our group here today. Miko's all settled in. This is awesome. This is the first time we'll ever sleep in a gur. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked about it. And we've got this for like the next few nights. So, yeah. Um, yeah, super cool. First things first though, uh, the bed is very stiff. <laughs> oh my God. It's hard. <laughs> like, it's hard. It's more than firm. It's actually it's just the, rock hard. It's the full experience. Honey. It's the Mongolian way. Otherwise, really cozy gur. It looks so small and squat from the outside. Yeah. But Inside actually has a lot more room yeah. than I expected. Like you can fully stand in this. <laughs> what else do you need? There's so much room for activities here. They were also telling us that under no circumstance should you lean on these posts or the door frame. Apparently that might topple the whole gur. So something we just have to avoid. By the way guys, if you are watching this video because you too are planning a trip to Mongolia soon and you're looking for a tour company to book either this tour with or something similar to this, we booked this with Four Seasons Travel and so far our experience with them has been excellent. You may have noticed in today's video that we have two guides with us, Niyama and Tuya. We also have a driver with us, Bata. And between the three of them, we have so far had an excellent time. So if you want to find their information, we'll put it down in the description box below. Okay, so like our gurus are right here, right? Where we're staying tonight is just right here. And just in front of us, there is a pen of camels. <laughs> and they just look so cool. So naturally we have to go and hang out with them for a little while. They look so majestic here. seen camels in real life, but I don't remember them being this big. They've never been this big. They also have got two humps, which I think is kind of unique. They're both looking at me like, who is this guy talking? Dude, let's look through it. Look how big his face is. We spent the rest of the evening admiring the camels, chatting with the kids who live on the property, and eating spaghetti with meat sauce for our first desert dinner while making new friends with our tour group. We had a beautiful sunset that was followed by an epic display of stars passing over our gur as we slept. Good morning. I'm not exactly sure everything that's on my plate, 
but definitely egg, definitely bread, definitely cheese, <laughs> and some veggies. <laughs> we slept okay. I just actually slept good, but I'm really sore this morning. Like, I feel like I slept on a, like a sheet of wood, which is kind of what I did. convenient as we've been driving along back on the paved highway there are a few of these markets along the road it's kind of funny though they always kind of say map kits all the time I think that might just be just how the translation works out or with the lettering or something like that but map kit if you see that it means market we're snacked up tissues juice coffee extra snacks all the necessities for the desert there's also bottles of vodka there for like $8, so if you need some alcohol, it's pretty easy to find out here and pretty affordable too. Ooh! Ooh, thank you. A fun fact about Mongolia is that there are only 3.3 million people living in the country, but 70 million livestock animals. That's roughly 21 times more livestock than people. Through the window of our van, we were seeing camels, horses, and goats. And of course, the Mongolian landscape wouldn't be complete without seeing a Prius in the wild as well. After many hours of driving, we came upon this small city where we stopped into a local restaurant for lunch. Miko chose his favorite, meat, eggs, and rice, but I went for something new. So I got wurz, which is like yeah. a very There's traditional a Mongolian, kind of like dumpling. It looks What's amazing. Inside? Ground meat? I'm not sure if it's like lamb or beef. It could definitely be mutton here. Mmm. Tomatoes. Not bad. Ooh, it's good. Mmm. Yeah. It's still really soft. Yeah. Like the bottom of the dumpling. It's still really soft. Mm -hmm. When it's very salty. The well, onion, garlic, this is really good. And now I have like 12 to eat <laughs> by myself. So they have served us some Mongolian milk tea. So it's uh, very popular here in Mongolia. It is made out of milk tea, like black tea, <laughs> salt, and water. Looks like more like a microwaved hot milk. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not as like milky, you know, it's not as thick. It's like almost like watery and uh, very salty. I don't taste any tea in here. Apparently it's very big in my oh, yeah. It's called milk tea, but it's definitely more milk and salt than it is tea. I think if I added like cinnamon in it or something, <laughs> then I would probably love it. <laughs> All right, we've been on the road another couple of hours just driving and driving along these incredible plains, just like nothing to see for ages. And then out of nowhere, we get to the Flaming Cliffs, uh, which are stunning. They're mostly famous because they're a really cool um, archeological site. There's lots of fossils here. I guess what made them most famous is that the first ever dinosaur egg fossil was found here. So that's pretty cool. So this has been turned into a national park and they just preserve the area and do lots of digs around here. Although the cliffs themselves here are very beautiful and really cool to look at. I think what makes this place extra special is A, that there's just so few people here. Like I think coming to a place like this and having like 15 other tourists is really cool. Yeah. And number two is that like, I feel like there's just like nothing around and all of a sudden, boom, there are these cliffs. Mongolia can do that for you. Yeah. Nothing, nothing, nothing and all of a sudden, Amazing. Something amazing. Although, in some ways, the, the nothingness itself is truly what's drawing me to Mongolia right now. I agree. The expansiveness yeah. of, of, of the horizon mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. just the fact that we could see so far. I swear I can see the curvature of the earth here <laughs> from, from here. <laughs>
Not a bad view, eh, baby? Yeah, you guys want to see the best toilet view ever? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> so, this is the toilet, right? You just pee here. It's actually not bad, just really quickly. It's a really nice washroom. It is a really nice washroom. Probably the nicest one we've had. But then look at your view, guys. Look at this view. Because <laughs> over there, some camels. Like, is there a more Mongolian toilet? <laughs> yeah, I think if you just had none of this, <laughs> and you just squatting right there and just looking at camels, that's as natural as it gets. It's as Mongolian as it gets. <laughs> I've literally done that today. So if you come on this tour, I have literally squatted in an open field and peed today because that's how few washrooms are here because there just are no amenities. Like there's just nothing as far as the eye can see. So prepare yourself for that. It doesn't look like it from the map, but this second day of the tour was the longest driving day. So we were very glad when we finally arrived at our home for the night. All right, tonight's menu is chicken soup and rice. It looks amazing. Another meal with our tour mates and the surreal Mongolian landscapes was followed by a beautiful cloudy sunset before we tucked into our gur to rest for day three, which was gonna be the best day of this adventure. Good morning. This morning we have got a delicious breakfast of egg sausage on toast. What do you call this again? It's, it's like, like an egg BLT. Oh, BLT. Yeah, That's it's like probably a BLT. <laughs> How's your sleep? Um, my sleep was actually pretty good, um, except that I was hot. Oh, it was hot last time. <laughs> yeah, it was we, hot. It's so funny. We packed for so many. Um, <laughs> We packed so many thermals and for, sweaters and long underwear and stuff. We bought all this. It's gonna be so cold. Yeah, we bought all this new stuff in Japan to warm us up here in the Gobi Desert, and it's just been so hot. Mm -hmm. I think in the middle of the night, I went, I woke up, had to use the washroom. It was like two in the morning. Mm. When you step outside the gur, it feels like you're in a completely different world. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're in a different planet. Because also the stars, like the stars, just like amazing. The hey? stars were so good. Mm -hmm. The wind was just right, and <laughs> it was. It's so dark out here, there's not a single point of light. It was tempting to sleep anywhere. outside instead. Yeah. <laughs> it really felt like a different world. Yeah. And then you wake up and then you're like, oh yeah, that's right, we're still in a different world. <laughs> this is Mongolia. Before starting this Gobi Desert tour, we had been warned by other travelers that the distances on this trip were no joke. Mongolia is a big country, so to get from one stop to the next always took at least a couple of hours, but we were rarely without entertainment. We wouldn't see another car for 100 kilometers, but somehow our heads were always on a swivel as we dodged horses, camels, goats, and even the occasional deer. While it's true there might be faster ways to get around the country, going overland gave us the chance to really understand how out of this world the Mongolian landscapes can be. We have officially made it to where we're staying today. This is our gur, very similar to other gurs that we've been staying in the past couple of days, but this one has six beds, so it's a little bit bigger. It's got a little bit more room. It's actually surprisingly really cool in here considering how hot it is outside. We have now also officially made it into the Kongoran Els National Park, which basically means we are deep into the Gobi Desert. It's just incredible being here. We were driving for a couple hours today, um, but we actually got in to our campsite now around one o'clock, which means we'll have lunch here and basically spend the rest of the day here. Well, I officially feel like we are definitely in the desert. The sand dunes just like 
pop out of nowhere. It's like driving, 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 and it still looks like desert, but then it's just like dunes. These dunes, I think, are considered like the singing dunes when the wind goes a certain way through them. They're supposed to sing. I'm not hearing them sing, but that's what I read, <laughs> which is really cool. This place is so expansive. I, it's really hard to tell when you're in Mongolia how far distances yeah. are. Like you can see for so long. And you're like, oh, I could probably walk there. But yeah. like, it could be like 40 kilometers. You yeah. know? Like it actually might be a really long way. So the dunes, they're massive. I can't tell if they're like a 20 yeah. minute walk or like a three hour walk. <laughs> One of the big activities we had on the schedule for today was camel riding, which is a really popular thing to do in this area. However, based on our own experiences with the tourism industry and camel riding around the world, we always choose not to ride camels. In this case, the shepherds had already herded the camels to our gur. So to not let their efforts go to waste, our group chose to enjoy the Gobi with the iconic two-humped camel in a way that we all felt comfortable with. So camel and I going for a walk in the Gobi Desert. It's Love definitely it. a unique experience. This is a very unique experience. I gotta say, this is the first time that we've ever walked like a camel <laughs> as if it was like a dog, like as if we were walking a dog a to camel. like a park. Yeah. <laughs> How do we look? I think we make a cute couple. Hold on, I think he needs, he needs a bit of a grooming. Yeah, you know, his skin feels a little like he's got eczema. I think he's a little on the dry side. <laughs> Apparently this is the time of the year where the camels are losing their winter fur. Yeah. So they look a little bit shaggy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, but the humps are actually full of fat. So that's what mm. they use as their store. I thought they was filled with water. I know, but totally not true. No. Oh. It's full of fat. <laughs> so they can go many, many days without, without food. It's like watching a dog walking group. Yeah. <laughs> dog moms. Just, we're in LA. We're just casually, <laughs> casually walking our camels. Yeah. This is how we do in Mongolia, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh, dogs walking camels. So, next up is we're finally going to explore the giant, giant dunes. The thing is, they look big, but they look even bigger when you see the actual people on the dune. You see how mm -hmm. tiny they are. They look like tiny little ants. That's how you know it's massive. Yeah, this is going to be tough. Feels like every step I take up is actually just effectively half a step because I slide down a little bit. So close, baby. So close. All you have to do is go all the way up there. Oh my god. This is always so much harder than it looks. That's where we started. I cannot believe we're up this high already. But we have still so much more to go. For sure one of the hardest things I've done in a while. But Nicole is already up there and she oh. says the view is so good. It better be worth the view you guys. It's so good. <laughs> Come on honey. Drum roll please. It's honestly Holy so smoke. epic. <laughs> How epic so is good. this? Like oh. it's so good. This is so unreal. Is it worth it? It's so worth it. But I'm wondering if anybody else brought a tripod or is it just me? <laughs> That's so bad. She's got this like huge oh. heavy backpack of electronics and it's this is a freaking hard hike. This is absolutely screensaver as we have to stay, we have to stay for a while. I'm guys. setting this as my yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have to see the colors. This is definitely one of those screens that comes up on like windows, you know? Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Screensaver of the day. It is so good.
so just like that, all the tourists cleared out, which is all of like six people from Korea. <laughs> They're over there, but we have this sand dune to ourselves, so we're just hanging out, taking some photos. Feeling lucky. It is really, really gorgeous here, this and the sun is coming down. Yeah. Like the dunes are beautiful. This is what you come to Mongolia for. Yeah. The place to yourself. You have a whole, pl and as far as the eye can see on either side. Mongolia. <laughs> but seriously, Mongolia. Actually, you know what's kind of interesting? I learned that only 5% of the Gobi Desert has sand dunes. So it's like hard to get here. Like it's really hard to get here. Which is probably why there's just not a lot of people here. Yeah, I mean, definitely hard to get. Look, look at where we started. Over <laughs> there somewhere. Yeah. I think I could probably, there we go. Get a little bit. This is so cool. You gotta come guys. Mongolia's where it's at. Waking up next to these huge sand dunes was a pretty epic way to start day four. Even though we've been in the Gobi Desert for days now, being surrounded by dunes just made it feel more real. To top it off, this girl site was so quiet. Besides us, the camels, and the family that lives here, there was just this adorable puppy as far as the eye could see. As magical as this spot was, we had another destination to check out that turned out to be totally different from our previous stops on this tour through the Gobi. So after quite a bit of driving and some lunch, we are at our main stop for today. This is the Yol Valley. And Yol, I think, is the name of a bird here. But this valley has this trail right in the center, so now we're just walking the valley. And I think we got about a three kilometer walk ahead of us. And hopefully we'll be able to see some rivers and maybe some snow, they say. Um, I'm really excited for it because it's a beautiful day and I love this change in landscape from where we were yesterday at the Gobi Desert. It's now much greener and more mountainous and there's a lot more wildlife again. Like As we're walking, you could already see some wild horses on our right that is just walking with us. So yeah, hopefully we'll have a great walk. So I think it's been four days since we've seen natural water and out of the middle of nowhere. Water starts right here. This is where you come if you need to survive, I guess. All right, so from horses, now we have cows. And then over there, they look like, they almost look like yaks. We passed many yaks as we followed the stream of water further into the valley. The pass through the mountains got narrower and narrower until we eventually came to an area with a layer of snow and ice. Mongolia gets very cold winters, filling the Yol Valley with snow. And in the narrow caverns that don't get direct sunlight, it's possible to find snow and ice here year round. You'd think in a desert we would not come across snow or ice, and yet here it is. <laughs> like, you just can't get away from it. You know, I really feel like we're in Canada right now. Between the rocks around us, like the mountain faces, the crispness, crispness of the air that's uh, breezing over the ice, it really feels like Canada. Except for the fact that there are Buddhist prayer flags hanging on the face of that wall over there. So that's kind of a telltale sign that we're not in Canada, it's come somewhere completely different. And we saw yaks come in. And we saw yaks, so yeah, <laughs> once again, not Canada. But it is, uh, it is giving me that feeling. Well, the valley was beautiful, but we have made it to our last Gur site of this whole trip. And we are going to round out our trip by learning to play the national game of Mongolia. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Can you show me again which one is uh, which? This one is a horse. Horse ankle? Oh, this one is a camel. Okay. This one is a sheep. This one is coat. Goat. Ah, uh, okay. Wow, they all look the same to me. We've discovered <laughs> the object of the game is to get uh, to the end of the long. ankle bones. Mine's that one's yeah. mine. To do and that, you I roll four ankle yeah. bones, yes. and depending on the way oh, they land, no you get harsh. to move spaces yeah. forward. Okay. It's pretty cool. It's nice and simple. Nice and simple. 
It turned out the national game of Mongolia is essentially a dice game, but instead of dice, you use polished animal bones because they're easier to find this far into the desert. Definitely the weirdest thing about this game is I smell the meaty bones. Like there's, a, there's a definite aroma in this room of like meat. Even though these have been cleaned and they look really clean. We didn't quite understand all the rules, nor could we really tell the bones apart, but somehow rolling animal bones and sharing drinks with our new friends in Agur was the perfect way to cap off the final night of this Mongolian adventure. Good morning, everyone. It is the final day of our tour, and that means that today we are driving 650 kilometers all the way back to Ulaanbaatar. It's gonna be a super long driving day. There's really not gonna be a lot for you guys to see, so we're gonna put it on the camera and enjoy the remaining time that we have here in the desert. Once again, we booked this tour of Four Seasons Travel. We've had an absolutely amazing experience with them exploring the Gobi Desert. If you wanna see this tour or any other tour that they offer around Mongolia, make sure you check out the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit subscribe and come along with us for the next adventure here in Mongolia. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. <laughs> also, okay, if you look at the camel like straight on from the nose forward, does this not look like Sid from Ice, from Ice Age? Okay, so my camel's <laughs> name is Sid <laughs> because I swear from straight on we've decided that camels, camels look like Sid from Ice Age. <laughs> Hurry boy, she's waiting there for you. Oh, I know this part now. Yeah. I'll take good luck to drive me away You have to you. put this at the End of your video. <laughs> oh, no, you need to put Mongolian's road singing oh. on your intro. The rain's done in Africa. This is the time to do the things in Africa. This is like not even Africa. <laughs> <laughs>